What on earth is going on in Korea? Good question. Uh, we have the two characters, the two principal characters involved. On the one hand, Donald J. Trump, who apparently now is being proposed for a, a Nobel Prize for peace, if you can imagine such a thing. Yes, and the other guy, uh, otherwise known as Little Rocket Man, Kim Jong Un, the leader of North uh, Korea, who only a few months ago were uttering the direst threats of mutual annihilation, one against the other. Uh, Trump was thundering against abuse against uh, uh, Little Rocket Man in Pyongyang, and uh, the Little Rocket Man in turn was uttering similar threats against the United States. At one stage, uh, the argument was whose uh, button was the bigger, uh, the nuclear button on the desk of Donald Trump, who he assured uh, the world was bigger than yours. And uh, in fact, he was threatening to physically annihilate North Korea, wipe it off the face of the map. Charming, a charming dialogue between this, these two protagonists of world peace. Yes, and now what a difference. What a colossal, tra magical, uh, mysterious transformation. Uh, almost the, the biggest uh, conversion since St. Since, 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 since Paul fell off his horse on the, on the road to Damascus. Astonishing. Now, of course, it's all sweetness and light. Uh, little Rocket Man has now done a, a hundred, what appears to be a hundred and eighty degrees turn. He's uh, turned on a charm offensive directed to the United States and to South Korea, of course, his neighbor. Uh, beginning with the Winter Olympics, you see them there lining up with the athletes waving little little flags and uh, all smiles, all sweetness and light. What on earth is occurring, people might ask. You know, wh when this uh, business first uh, erupted, because it is true, it's perfectly true, that uh, uh, and that's the first interesting point. North Korea is a tiny little state. It's a pygmy state. It doesn't, doesn't even register on the, normally uh, in, the, in the radar of world diplomacy, of world politics. Yet now, of course, it strides forward, little rocket man strides forward as being a great world leader. It's, he's planning to ha actually have a discussion with his old uh, uh, pal in, in Washington, with Donald J. J. Trump, the first American president that's ever met anyone from North Korea, if you you please. After 50 years, incidentally, I don't know if you know this, no North Korea and the United States are still in a state of war. They've been in a state of war since the Korean War in the early 1950s, where, by the way, the United States uh, didn't get all its own way. In fact, the, it ended as a draw. Viet Vietnam was the first war in history that America actually lost. In North Korea, it was a kind of draw game, but they didn't get uh, what they wanted. And since that time, ever since that time, for, for more than five decades, the United States and North Korea, my friends, have been and are still, in a, technically speaking, in a state of war. You've got the uh, parallel established between the border between North and South uh, Korea, which is a military zone, or demilitarized zone, the actual line itself, of course. But you know, on either side, there's artillery, there's troops, there's, uh, American troops, of course, also are stationed in South Korea, shouting abuse on a daily basis on, on megaphones to propaganda directed the one against the other. And yet all of a sudden everything has changed. Now just think back a matter of a few months ago when this uh, latest crisis uh, erupted between Washington and Pyongyang. At that time, there was uh, a mania, a craze taking place in the press, the media, not for the first time, spreading the idea that the entire world was on the brink of a precipice. The world was supposed to be on the brink of World War III. Oh, yes, they, they actually put that line forward. And many people actually believed it. People tend to believe, I don't know why, but people tend to believe what's published in the newspapers and the television and so on and so forth, and the media, pushing this line of the imminence of the Third World War. 
Yes, and even many people on the left swallowed this nonsense, except for ourselves, the Marxists. We pointed out that it was nonsense. We pointed out, and I repeat, that under present conditions, <clears throat> there are no conditions at, pre at the present time for anything resembling a world war between the great powers. That's ruled out for a series of circumstances which I don't have time to, to exp expound upon. Suffice it to note that the USA and Britain was not even able to bomb Syria because of the, uh, the opposition to the war. There's, there's different reasons why it's ruled out, but let's just believe me that there is no basis for a world war, which isn't to say, of course, that uh, peace is broken now, because small wars are taking place all the time, and they will take place. Like the invasion of Iraq, that was a small war terrible consequences. The war in Syria, that is a, another small war with equally terrible, monstrous uh, consequences. Or take the civil war in the Congo, which uh, people don't even notice that. It doesn't even warrant, uh, it isn't even on the, on, it wasn't even, even at that time, it wasn't on the, on the front pages of the newspapers. Nobody, and yet five million people, it's estimated, they don't know how many people were slaughtered in that terrible conflict. So these small wars involving imperialism, because that's uh, at the bottom of it, are taking place and will take place constantly all the time. But, but a world war, oh no, that was never on the cards. And this kerfuffle, this nonsense, this uh, uh, colossal barrage of propaganda about, about world war was just entirely empty propaganda, neither more nor less. Nevertheless, of course, uh, it is true, North Korea is a small country, yes, but it's got a big army, big powerful army. They have inter intercontinental ballistic missiles and they have nuclear weapons. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Part of the, uh, the logic of, uh, of Kim Jong-un's position, and by the way, he was presented as a madman. He's not mad, actually, any more than Donald Trump. Trump is mad, well, he's slightly unbalanced, one might say, from his tweets. But they're not ma mad, no. Or rather, to put it as Shakespeare did, if this be madness, yet there's method in it. Oh, yes. There was method in, in, the, in the argument of the North Koreans all along. They knew what they were doing. And by the way, they seem to have achieved what they, what they wanted. They've got away with what they, what they were angling for. The first uh, angle, of course, was to build up a powerful arsenal, which they have done. Not as powerful, of course, as the U.S.'s article. That's like a pop gun against uh, heavy artillery. But th nevertheless, they have quite a powerful army, and they possess nuclear weapons, and increasingly the power to deliver these weapons, although that delivery was, was not yet complete from all the uh, experts that I've, uh, that I've, uh, that I've seen. Nevertheless, they, 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 they did pose a serious military threat to the USA. There's no doubt about that, and particularly to South Korea this, and Japan. There's no doubt about that uh, also. They, they pose a far bigger threat, incidentally, than Iran ever did. And Trump is making a lot of noise about uh, Iran. We'll deal with that in a moment. But no, th they did pose a threat. But you see, they never intended to use that uh, weaponry. I'm convinced of that. If they had commenced a war of any sort, then of course it would have been an abs that would have been an absolute cat cataclysm. For a start, uh, Seoul, the South Korean the capital, would have been obliterated immediately, even without the use of missiles, because the North Koreans have got a, a range of, uh, of heavy artillery directed against uh, that uh, city, which would have obliterated it in a matter of 24 hours. So therefore, the, the, the consequences of an actual war on the Korean Peninsula would be absolutely unimaginable. But for that reason, it was never seriously intended. This was a, a bar, I'm convinced, I was convinced at the time, and now it's confirmed. It was a bargaining ploy of North Korea, of Pyongyang, in order to extract financial, economic concessions from the USC. You see, the North, it is known that the North Korean economy is in a very parlous state. We don't know how far the uh, stories about actual starvation and hunger is true, but that they're in a difficult economic position, one can believe. Now, it's clear that China's played a big role in this. A China that accounts for 80% of the trade with, uh, with the South, with, with, with the North Koreans, rather. 
uh, particularly coal, which is its main export to China. And last year, under pressure from the USA, but also because of their own concerns, I think the Chinese themselves were getting a bit worried about the antics of, uh, of the man in, in Pyongyang, they applied pressure. Uh, you may or may not have noticed that uh, prior to this latest uh, outbreak of peace, as it's called, that uh, 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 Kim Jong-un actually made a trip to Peking, to Beijing. It, wasn't, uh, it was kept pretty quiet in the first instance, but it is clear that he had, uh, had some very serious conversations with the Chinese leaders who probably said, now look, this has gone far enough and uh, you'd better... Uh, you'd better sort yourself out. For the first time ever, the Chinese actually began to apply sanctions. Now that's very serious from the standpoint of North Korea because that would entirely throttle their economy, which as I say, it was in quite a parlous state anyway. And therefore, uh, Kim Jong-un decided to play his card with the Winter Olympics, with the charm offensive, with this completely unexpected offer to do away with do away with his nuclear weapons. How far he's prepared to do that in practice, of course, is another matter. But don't forget, only a couple of months ago, he was like, oh, no, no, North Korea will never get rid of its nuclear weapons. It's unthinkable. It's a matter of principles. Well, principles, of course, in politics have their price, as everything else in international politics. And basically what he's offering is to do away with, or to, or to partially at least do away with, uh, nuclear weapons on the Korean Peninsula, but in exchange for something. You know, as Margaret Thatcher said, there's no such thing as a free lunch, and there's no such thing either as a deal on nuclear weapons, and therefore they will extract a price. Uh, it, is, it is on the cards that Trump will meet uh, uh, little, little Rocket Man, that the conversation will be a very interesting one. I wish I I wish I was a fly on the wall to overhear that conversation. But either way, of course, it suits Trump also because he's also in domestic difficulties, as, as you know. And then he can boast and brag that he's the, and it's true, he'll be the first American president ever to meet with the president of, uh, of North Korea. Big deal by the big deal maker himself. And of course, from his angle, uh, Kim Jong-un, who's quite a smart uh, cookie, not a madman at all, but quite a, a clever guy, uh, he's played on, on, on Trump's vanity. Trump, as you know, is a very vain individual, very uh, full of himself, and therefore he'll get the, the, all the kudos and all the propaganda which he, which he requires. They will have to do a deal. Yes, they will do a deal. I don't uh, doubt that for a moment. But of course, this deal will come with a, with a price tag attached. And you better believe it, it's going to be a very heavy price tag, tag indeed. The, the North Koreans will require a large amount of aid. Billions, maybe trillions, who knows, uh, over a period. They will strike a hard bargain. There was an American senator appeared the other day on uh, television, and he said, no, 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 this, this, is, this is going to come with a big bill. If the American people think that the, that the Marshall aid plan was expensive, well, they'd better <laughs> be prepared for a shock. So that's the name of the game. It really is part of a cynical and uh, carefully thought out uh, plan on the part of North Korea to obtain money, obtain money, as, as they say in legal terms, obtaining money from menaces, no, and the menaces, that's, that's called blackmail in legal terminology. Now, as a PS to all this, before we hasten to uh, award uh, Donald J. Trump with the, the, uh, with the Nobel Prize for Peace, you better follow the, the other plot that's taking place in relation to Iran. I see that Mr. Netanyahu, who, by the way, is under accu accusation of corruption, doubted, undoubtedly well merited. You know, his, his political situation is, uh, is in jeopardy. And he's raising a big pantomime, there's no other word for it. You saw him on television yesterday, and it was just like a TV game show, not like politics or diplomacy or anything serious. It was crazy. It looked like, it looked like a circus act. With this, in which he accused Iran of telling lies and of uh, having nuclear weapons at a, at a time when the international agency concerned have just said that he hasn't got such, uh, that Iran has not got such things at all. And therefore they're planning, Trump seems to be, uh, it's not clear, you never know, never know what this individual is going to do, but he seems to be planning to break off the deal with, with Iran and that will have very serious consequences 
in further destabilizing the Middle East, as if it wasn't destabilized sufficiently at the present time. Yes, all this was taking place, all this indicates the colossal instability of world capitalism and of world relations at the present time. That is perfectly true. Capitalism means war, that's also perfectly true. Yes, but a world war, my friends, no, please, please uh, listen to me, friends on the left, those of a nervous disposition, don't worry, go to your beds, sleep soundly at night, there ain't gonna be no war.